Hey guys, Alex Sutherland here, and today I'm making a video on how you can use GTO calculations to compute aggregate action frequencies. So what do I mean by that? The basic idea is that uh, we want to be able to look at something and say, how often in aggregate across all possible flops would a GTO player see bet after opening the button to 2.5x and getting called by the big blind? And the reason this can be useful is to compare it to HUD stats or database stats. And this can be important either, you know, if we're trying to look at a regular that we play against frequently and determine their leaks, you know, we might look in our HUD, have a bunch of hands on them, see they see bet 61% after they open the button to 2.5 and get called by the big blind. But it's not at all clear, is that see betting a lot? Is that see betting a little? We could compare that to the population, but we don't really know how that would compare to GTO play. And so the idea is that it would be nice if we could use our bulk GTO calculations to answer those questions and see what the correct aggregate CBET frequency is, both so we can analyze how to exploit our opponents and also so that we can, if we're trying to kind of get closer to GTO in our own play or implement a GTO strategy, we can see uh, our progress as we get closer, how close we are, analyze our own leaks, etc. And I want to say that this is very different from the general purpose of GTO solvers, which is, you know, to answer a question of how should you play on a specific board, what should, should your strategy be? When we get these aggregate frequencies, you know, it'll say CBET 63%. That's not going to be enough for us to go play. Well, we need to know on each of those board, which hands do we CBET. And that's where running kind of individual calculations comes into play. But there is useful stuff to be gained from these aggregate calculations as well. And I don't think a lot of people know how to do it. So I want to show how you can do this type of analysis. And I'm going to be using simple post flop to do this. Um, you can do this really easily with simple post flop pre flop packs. If you ha you don't need a simple post flop solver license to view pre flop packs, but you do need it to do the flop aggregation calculations I'm going to show here. Um, but what's nice about the simple post flop pre flop packs is they come with all the flop component solutions pre computed. So we will have all the data that we need to do this kind of aggregate analysis. And as you will see here, I'll start from scratch and we'll be done in 10 minutes doing all this calculation. There's uh, really nothing to it. Whereas if you want to do it with your own calculations, you would first need to run a big bulk batch of flop calculations, which might take a day or two to calculate before you can do the aggregation analysis that I'm going to show here. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of how to actually do this. I'm going to pull up simple post flop. And the first step is going to be go to the pre flop menu. If you go to cloud situations, um, and none of, none of what I'm showing now do you need a simple post flop solver license for. Um, all the things you've computed will be here. Uh, any packs you've bought will show up as well. And so I'm going to be looking at the big blind versus 2.5 button open here. And you know here's the strategy. Here's all the stuff we can browse. But what we can also do from that exact same menu is there's this download flops button. And when you click that, it'll download a zip file with every possible flop component solution. So for every, this uses 184 board subset. For each of the 184 flops, there'll be what you do on three bets, or you know the full solution file for three bet pots, raised pots, four bet pots, etc. So you download that, it'll be a zip file, you extract it to a folder. And then once you've done that, you just go back to your post flop, simple post flop menu, go to file and you need to open one of these solutions. So I downloaded it to here. I unzipped it. It's organized in a folder structure. So we go preflop, then we go to the uh, button raise that says 2.75, but that's because the way you model the small blind in simple post flop is you treat it as an ante and split it between the two players. So this is really a 2.5x open. Uh, go into the call folder because we're going to be looking at single raise pot C betting for the imposition player and you can just pick any one of them and, and open it. It doesn't matter what you pick. Then the next step is we need to combine all of our flop solution files together. And the way we do that is we go into the merge tree function from save tree, click that arrow, merge tree is an option. And then you navigate to the folder that contains all the other similar trees, click select folder. And if you do it correctly, it'll say success, 184 situations merged. And that means it's merged in the data from every uh, flop component solution. And so now I go to the part of the game tray I'm interested in, which is going to be this C betting node here. And I go flop runouts from the save tree menu. 
and I'll do some quick calculation here and pull up this menu showing me on every board of these 184 how often I check and how often I bet and what my EV on that board is at this node. And what I can do is I can right click here and bring up export table to CSV and it will let me uh, you know, export this to a CSV that I can open in Excel or Google Sheets, whatever spreadsheet software you use. And this, this menu is really useful. You can also use it just to jump around between solutions. You can do some filtering. Uh, but for us, all we need is the CSV file. So once you have that, there is one final step. You'll have, uh, you know, rows for each flop and each uh, betting frequency. And so we want to do a weighted average. We can't just do a normal average if we want to get the aggregate C bet frequency because not all of these flops are equally likely. This 184 board flop subset is based on specific relative frequencies of each flop occurring. You know, something like uh, a monotone board occurs less frequently than a two-tone board, for example. All those frequencies need to be taken into consideration. And so the way you do that is in your simple post flop install folder, there is a flop subset directory and the three file is the one that has the data for the 184 board subset. And if you open that up, you can see for each uh, flop in the subset exactly what weight that flop is given. And once you have all these numbers, you can look at the, you know, which, which board and figure out what weight you need to give it. So I can filter this by 10, 10, 10. And I know that one gets 0.117 weight. And so I wrote a program that will just uh, read this file and apply it to any CSV file. You can do the same thing with Excel. If you, you know, don't have any programming skills, you can do it manually. It'll take a little while, but it's still not a huge task. And then you have your weighted average and you have your aggregate CBET frequency. So that's really all there is to the process. Um, I would feel like a tease if I didn't actually give you the aggregate CBET frequency for this specific situation. So it turns out that for a 50% pot CBET, which is what these solutions use, the GTO frequency is 54.6% for CBETing. Now, uh, as we know from any of you guys who watch my theory on bet sizing or my theory of winning series on card runners, the frequency with your CBET is going to depend on your CBET size. And in general, if you CBET smaller, you'll CBET a little more. If you CBET bigger, you'll CBET a little less. Now, what's great is that you, if you have a simple post-flop license to do your own uh, flop calcs, you can pretty easily uh, get very accurate estimates of what this frequency would be at different CBET sizes by running your own bulk flop calculations. So what you can do is you can go back into simple post-flop, take the solution of this form that you uh, opened, edit the node, change the amount. So say I want to do a, you know, uh, say I want to see you instead of two bit CBET half pot, I'll see bit more like two thirds pot. And I'd go there, I'd edit the tree. As you can see, it clears out my data because the tree is different. And then I would go to generate boards. And I can then select my 184 board subset, click save and that'll put all of those boards into a specific folder. And then I can go to my jobs folder here, my jobs menu here, and I can select that folder where I save those trees, set this up as a job, and use SPF's bulk calculations to solve those 184 flops, and then do the exact same aggregation technique that I showed you before by merging the resulting solutions and doing the flop aggregate menu. Now, if you want to do your own calculations like that on a pretty big game tree like this, running 184 flops will probably take, depending on how high end your PC is, uh, you know, 10 hours to a day, something like that. So it's not something you can do, you know, all the time. But if you're curious, you know, and you feel like in my games, most people see it a different size, you can take these exact same pre-flop pack ranges, edit the post-flop portion of the game tree, and get a very good estimate for what the GTO CBETing frequency is for a different sized CBET. So I hope you guys found this video useful. 
um, I will put the link to download the simple pre the simple post flop pre flop six pa max pack, which you do need to purchase. It's not free. For those of you guys who are interested, the link I give does give a discount. And if you have any questions, please let me know on Twitter at GTO Range Builder or post in the YouTube comments. And be sure to follow my blog, blog.gtrangebuilder.com. And I think that's it. Thanks for watching.